Hello everyone, welcome back to Sudoku Coder. My name is Ravina, and today we are going to solve problem number one thirty three, that is clone graph. So let's start by reading the problem statement. It says that given a reference of a node in a connected undirected graph, return a deep copy or clone of the graph. Each node in the graph contains a value integer and a list of list nodes of its neighbors. So it is of this particular format where each node is of type node here, and then in each node there is a value and list of other nodes which are actually its neighbors. So let's look at the test case format here. It says that for simplicity, each node's value is the same as the node's index. So each node that we come across is gonna be in serial number. So starting from one, so one indexed. For example, the first node with value one, the second with value two, and so on. The graph is represented in the test case using an adjacency list. An adjacency list is a collection of unordered lists used to represent a finite graph. Each list describes the set of neighbors of a node in the graph. The given node will always be the first node with value one. You must return the copy of the given node as reference to the cloned graph. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that it is a undirected graph. That means that we don't know in which way the nodes are pointing or how uh, we can go from forward to backward and backward to forward. No thanks, I don't want the AI feature. Okay, so. Um, if you don't know what graphs are, I would highly encourage you to check out my video on graphs that I published this week. It's in Python and all you need to know about graphs. Okay, so let's see the problem statement. Uh, they have given us a nice diagram. Uh, what it says is that this is the original graph. Here you can see that 1 is connected to 2, 2 is connected to 3, 3 is connected to 4 and 4 is connected to 1 again. If you see, 1 has 2 neighbor nodes, 2 and 4, whereas 2 also has 2 neighbor nodes, 1 and 3. And same for 3, it has 2 and 4, and for 4, it is 1 and 3. So we want to clone the graph. We cannot simply just return whatever we are getting in the parameters for the method. So if you try to return the same graph, it says that no, it's wrong, you cannot return the same graph. The second probability is here is you cannot mess up the nodes. For example, here you see that one has two neighboring nodes, two and four. Here, if you see one has three and four as neighbors. So this is wrong. This should be two. And that's why this is also not an acceptable solution. The nodes, the neighbors should be same as the original graph. Now here, if you look at this middle example here, this looks exactly the same as one on the left, just the difference is it's blue and this is yellow. So this is actually a perfect clone of the graph that we have received. Okay, so um, just for uh, simplicity sake, they have shown this as an adjacency list for the examples that you have given. So it's like two is um, the first node is connected to two and four. So you can see that the first node is connected to 2 and 4. Then the second node is connected to 1 and 3. So the second node is connected to 1 and 3. The third node is connected to 2 and 4. So third node is connected to 2 and 4. And lastly, the fourth node is connected to 1 and 3. So the fourth node is connected to 1 and 3. So this is how <clears throat> you read the adjacency list. But keep in mind, that the input we have is of this format where it is of type node where it will have one integer and then neighbors neighbors is going to be list of node okay so that's about the problem statement now let's move on to the notepad and see how can you solve this we are going to solve this problem using breadth first search and since it is breadth first search we are going to use queues and the other data structure that we are going to use today is dictionary to make our life easier okay so if you don't know what breadth first search is feel free to check out my video on that i go through the process and the base code that i use for every other breadth first search problem because it is a much easier if you know a particular you know algorithm and then you stick with it and you make just some changes to it okay 
So the first things first is we need a queue. So I'm going to create a queue here. Then we need dictionary. So I'm going to create my dictionary right here. So this is how we go with the problem. We start with the starting node. Since the problem states that the uh, node starting will be with the node number as one. So this is going to be our starting node. Okay. So what we do is uh, when we find a particular node, we see if it is there in the dictionary nodes. It is if it's not there, we create an entry for it. We add it to the queue and keep the processing going. Okay. So let's start. So one is the first current node we have. Is that in my dictionary? No, it is not there. Okay, so I will create a entry. So entry will be in the terms that we are going to have an integer value as the key. And then in the value part, we are going to create a node. So I'm going to denote all the nodes as boxes with numbers on them so that we can understand. So this is node one that I have created. Since I created something new in my dictionary, I'm going to add that to my queue. So I add that node to my queue. Okay. So here is where our while loop starts. And this is where we start our breadth first search algorithm. What we do is we first pop what is there out of our queue. So we pop one. So we have one with us. Now we check how many neighbors does one have? It has two neighbors, correct? So it has this two and four node as the neighbor. Okay, so let's take two as the first, as the first node to process. So we are processing two here. We check is two in my dictionary? No, it is not there. Okay, we create an entry and then we create another node with two. Since we added something to the dictionary, we have to add it to the queue. So we added two to our queue. Okay, that one is done. Then in the end, what we do is after adding to the queue, we make sure that we create a link between these two nodes. So the current node here is actually one that we are processing right now. So we have to create a link from one to its neighboring node two. So let me do that. So I create a link from one to two. Okay, that is done. Then now we move to the next node, the next neighboring node that one has, which is four. So I check is four there in my dictionary? No, it is not. Okay. So I create an entry. I create four as the key integer four as the key and then the value as the node newly created node four. Since I created a new entry in the dictionary, I have to make sure that I add it to my queue as well. Okay. So I've added it here. Now I have to make sure that I create a link between one and four. So what I do is I create a link between one and four. So a link goes from one to four. Okay. So I have processed all the neighboring elements for one. As you can see, one has two neighboring neighboring elements and we have covered both of them. So now we can actually move on to the next node. So let me get rid of this. So now the next node, what is the next node? Next node is something that is next in the queue. So here we have two. So we pop out two and we have our current node as two now. So it is now current node is two. So it has now two neighbors. So one neighbor is three and the other neighbor is one. Okay. So we will start by processing one. We check is one in the dictionary. Yes, it is already there. It's right here. Okay. So if it is already there, then we do not add it to the queue. Neither do we again add it to the dictionary nodes because it is already there. So what's remaining? What's remaining is to create a link between two and one. So we have to create a link between two and one. So it should go from here to here. Okay. So now that you can see that we have created a link from one to two and from two to one. So this is un undirected graph. But we have to make sure that we have the neighbors in there. That's why I'm using these arrows. But please do not get confused. Okay. Then we go to the next neighbor that 2 has is 3. We check is 3 in the dictionary. No, it is not. Okay. So we add it. So we add a new key and then a new value of node 3. Since we added this to the, to the dictionary, we have to make sure that we add it to the queue. Then in the end, we create the link we create the link from 
2 to 3. So we do from 2 to 3. Okay. This looks good. We have processed both the elements. Now I am going to remove this. Now the next thing in the queue is 4. So we pop out 4. So this is going to be my current element is going to be 4 now. And it is going to point here. It has two neighboring nodes 1 and 3. Let us start with 1. I will check is 1 there in the dictionary. Yes it is there. Okay, so I should create a link. I'm not going to add it to the dictionary because it already exists. Since I'm not going to add it to the dictionary, I don't add it to the queue. And then what is remaining? Just creating the link. So I have to create a link from 4 to 1. Okay, so let's see. I will create a link from 4 to 1. Okay, done. Now we are going to do the other neighbor of 4, which is 3. I will check is 3 in the dictionary. Yes, it is there. Okay. Since it is there in the dictionary, we don't add it to the queue. What's remaining? Just creating a link between 4 and 3. Okay. So, I create a link from 4 to 3. All the neighbors are explored. Everything's looking good. We pop the last element in our queue. So, we pop 3. Now, everything, now the node is pointing to 3. We have two neighbors, 2 and 4. We will check is 2 in our dictionary. Yes, it is there. Okay, then we create a link from 3 to 2. So, let me see. From 3 to 2. Okay, that's done. Let's move on to the next neighbor, 4. Is 4 in the dictionary? Yes, it is already there. Okay, we don't add it to the queue then. But we should have a link from 3 to 4. So, we have going from 3 to if you look at this particular dictionary now, you can see that every other node is connected to each other. So, for uh, not every other node, I mean, you see 1 that is connected to 4, 4 is connected to 1, 1 is connected to 2, 2 is connected to 1, as for 3 and 4. So, if I look at this particular dictionary and I try to map the graph what i will do is i have one let's start with one okay i have one one is going to where one is going to four okay so i say i have four here and one is also going to two correct so i am going to create two then i go to two two is going to which one is going to three okay so two is going to three and then where? Okay, 2 is just going to 3. Alright. Then we go to 4. 4 is going to 1, which we already have. Well and good. And then 4 is again going. 4 is also going to 3. So, we have this. Now, let's get to 3. 3 goes to 2, which is this particular edge here. Okay, feels good. And then 3 is going to 4. And this particular edge here. So, if you look at this, this actually perfectly matches with what we have as the input. So, here we have created a perfect clone of the graph. Uh, with this particular dictionary, it might be a little confusing, but if you look at it as creating links, as I described, it will be much easier to understand. Now, let's go to our IDE and see how can you code this in Python. So, whenever we start coding this problem, we have to understand that there can be some edge cases. In this particular algorithm, we were never told that node is always going to be a value. That is something that you always have to question if you are in an interview. You always can ask your interviewer the saying that, you know, can node be null? In this particular uh, problem, it is not told that whether it can be null or, you know, it can be some value. So, the edge case here would be to check if it is not null. So, if not node. Then what I do, I just return. Okay. So this is my edge case. Uh, now let's start with actually coding out. So the first thing that we needed was a dictionary. So I do dict of notes. Create that. And the second thing that we need is a um, actually a node that we are going to store in the dictionary. So I'm going to create a node. So I'm going to name it head and node.value. 
okay oops no dot value all right and then what we do is we add it to our dict nodes so let's do dict of nodes of that particular nodes value so this integer is equal to what is equal to the head that we just created okay then we create a queue and then we add that node as its first value okay so the prep work here is done now let's start with the breadth first search algorithm so breadth first search is while queue so while the queue is not empty what we do is we extract the current node so current node will be whatever is in the queues first element so q dot pop zero and then we check for all the neighbors so for neighbor in current dot neighbors we will check if the neighbors value is there in the dictionary remember so i do if neighbor dot val is not in my dictionary if it is not there in the dictionary what do i do i add it so i add my particular neighbor so how do i add i first create a key with the integer so whatever is the neighbor dot value this is going to be the integer and then i create a new node remember i need to create a new node because i cannot have the node pointing to its uh, or the node as the old node because that will give you a incorrect answer from lead code so i create a new node with the neighbor's value and since i added something to the dictionary i make sure that i also add it to the queue so i'm adding that to my queue so i'm adding the neighbor to my queue okay so once i have done that what do i do i do the linkage correct so in my for doing the link what do i do i go to my dict nodes current element so whatever is the current dot val i update the neighbors there so dot neighbors dot append i update the neighbors and what is the neighbor neighbor is the node that we just created the one that we created and added it to this place so i'm just going to copy that and paste it here because this is the exact node that we want okay so that's done now it is going to go through every neighbor and then do the linkage and everything so i think we are pretty much done here everything is done in the end what you do is we return the head let me see if it runs okay let me actually open this and submit okay you see that this one was accepted now let's talk about the space and time complexity of this problem so since this is a graph and we are going through each and every node once you see that we are going through each and every node once because we are here in the queue and then here in neighbors we are restricting that we do not add something that we have already processed to the queue we are going through each and every element exactly once so the time complexity of this algorithm is going to be o of n where n is the number of nodes in the graph as far as the space complexity concerned uh you can see that at one point let's take the worst case scenario here suppose we have only one node at one point our queue is going to store all the nodes that are there inside our graph so here the space complexity is how much if there is only one node in the graph and we are storing that one node in the queue that means that we are storing all the nodes that are there in the queue and if there are n nodes in the queue uh, in the graph we are going to have n nodes in the queue so the space complexity here is going to be o of n as well if you don't know what space and time complexity are i have a video on it please check that out i also talk about what are the you know um common space and time complexities that will give you a very good understanding of what it is and it will help you really to calculate them very easily when you solve these problems so i hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up comment below that really really helps my channel if you want to see similar videos from me subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye bye